Welcome back everyone, Mudford here. I'm outside working in the yard again today. I have a garage, but it seems like I work more in the yard than in the garage. The reason why I'm working out in the yard is because we are doing an E85 conversion on the Project Sleeper Regal GS. And I have the injectors here and the pump here, in-tank fuel pump I got from ZZ Performance. I also have their computer and this is also a ZZP cold air kit. I'm gonna have to take that out to get to the computer. The computer's gotta be pulled out, mailed to ZZP for them to reprogram it for the E85. It's programmed for premium right now. The car's gonna be down for a few days, maybe even a week while I send the computer out. I'm planning on sending it out tomorrow morning to them and I won't be able to move the car other than pushing it. So I moved it here out of the way because we got an ATV race coming up and I got to be able to get the quads in the trailer and I got to work on them yet in the garage. I got three quads in the garage in various states of disarray right now. The Bronco and the mower in the other side and I just don't have room to leave it in there for three or four or five days. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery. And then we're going to start pulling the air box off. I'm going to go ahead and pop the lid off of the air box. Just got to turn these. I can probably just take the air filter off and then I should be able to get to the connectors and get this pulled out from right here. This is kind of tricky, but... There, got it out. Had to get the air filter out, because the computer is right below it here. Now all I have to do is take these two connectors off. They're both seven millimeter. Okay, once you get those loose, you can kind of pop them out with a screwdriver here and there's a seal around there that you don't want to lose but our computer is out now ready to be shipped out to ZZP right there so there's a nut on either end of the fuel rail so I can get it with my finger now we're going to loosen the one on the other end, I already started it with the ratchet. This one's a lot easier to get to. And there we go. Fuel rail is loose now. So you can, should be able to see the connector. It has a metal clip on it. We'll pop that out. Maybe. There we go. So I've got the fuel rail out. I've pulled some of the clips out. There's the last one, you don't want to lose these. And then your injectors should pop right out. You're gonna have some fuel pressure behind them because I didn't bleed it. And there it is out. Looks like my O-ring is stuck in there. Have to get that out later. Okay, what I do with these usually is just get them a little bit wet with gasoline. And just kept working it around until it slid up in there. And then your clip needs to go with the small side on the bottom that hooks on the injector. And then it just snaps in and it holds it right in. 
Now we just have to get it worked down in here. Wiggle it around a little bit. Get it where we need it. And it looks like it's right down in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the uh, nuts back on and hook the harness back up. We're just gonna go ahead and plug the injectors back in. There's one, there's two. That might be easier with the, uh, I'm gonna try putting the clip on this. Back. Anyway, I got the clip on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, snap this one on and they'll pop right on with the clip on. So there's a groove it fits in. You can go ahead and put it right in there and then just pop it on and you'll hear it click right on. Okay, the front is completely swapped out and then with the new injectors in, I just have to go ahead and do the back. That's gonna be a little tricky. All you have to do is the same thing on the front. You have to get these fuel injectors out and the hard part is gonna be, you don't have near as much room to work with as you did on the front. Because you're still hooked to the fuel lines. And there's just not much space back here. So I got it all back together. Um, just a couple little connections and stuff. Everything back the way it should be. Um, we're ready for a fuel pressure test now. So today I decided it would be a good day to change the fuel pump. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that none of the injectors are leaking on the fuel rail at the o-rings so i'm just gonna um power up the fuel pump let let it get up to pressure and we'll check and see if we see any leaks or smell any fuel so on this car it is number relay number 19 right here and i just pulled that relay out if you look on it basically you want power to go from pin 30 to pin 87 so when you look on here it's the top left one to the bottom right one. So we'll just push this in and you should hear it. It's charging up with fuel and actually the regulator is popping open and then pushing it back to the tank. So I don't see anything. I don't smell anything. So I think we are good. What I'm going to do now is hook up my fuel pressure gauge. I don't have a really good setup to do this, but I want to get all of the 93 octane out of the tank and I can save that and put that in my gas can. We can save that and use it for our quads and then I will run to the gas station and grab some E85 and put it in the tank after I put the fuel pump in so that we will be all ready when the computer gets here. So I just have my fuel pressure gauge hooked up with the drain button locked down with these vice grips. And it's going to my gas can here. So now we're just gonna fire up the fuel pump and let it run until we get all the gas out of the tank. I left it going while I was getting my tools ready. And you can see there's no pressure on the gauge now. I can still hear the pump running. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. We will put our relay back in. And we're just gonna disconnect all this. So the first thing I gotta do is take the seat bottom out to get access to the bolts holding the seat back in. I think I'll just leave these doors both open because it's about 100 degrees in here. So you might have to wiggle it a little bit to get this to release. Okay, we got it. Now we can just tip it up. We're just gonna slip this out of the way here. And then you can see the bolts are here. I think those are 10s. And those are probably 17s or 18s, maybe. I can't remember. But well, we just got to take, there's four of them. We got to take them out, and then we should be able to lift the seat back out of our way. Okay, I pulled the seat back out. I just sat the rear cushion back down in. And now we peeled the carpet back and have access to this door here in the trunk. So we'll just take these little... 10 millimeter nuts off. Then we can get this cover out of the way. So we're gonna clean this up a little bit, if we can. Because we don't wanna get all that crud 
down into our fuel tank. First, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the connections off. I assume this is the fuel gauge. Try to get stuff pushed out of the way. This is the power to the fuel pump. This is my ZZP connector. If you watch my other video, you'll know all about this. But we're gonna get it out of the way. That'll help us get this connector out. But we're gonna get the hoses off. And then I will get down there, probably clean it up with a screwdriver as best I can. And then I will use my shop vac to get all the dust and dirt residue out. And then we should be able to hopefully pull this straight up and get it out of here. I do have to say so far, this is the most well-engineered fuel pump setup I've seen. These hoses are plastic and they, the keepers and everything, and they came right off. And keep in mind, this car is 22 years old. I'm sure it's the original pump in there. This has probably never been touched. So far, everything has come right loose, and I was looking at this wondering how this is going to come off. Um, it looks like this is like a big snap ring around here that just needs to be popped off, and it look, I already got it to move a little bit. So it's not even seized in, which is amazing. There, see it's already popped loose. So, yeah, I just need to clean up around here so this doesn't end up in my fuel tank first, which I'm going to get a little vacuum and try that. Don't want to pry too hard on this. Well, it looks like it's loose. I think it was just the seal holding it it came right out um the tank looks pretty good it's pretty dry we're gonna go ahead and get this in the shop and get the fuel pump swapped out in it okay we got it in the shop now haven't quite figured out how to get the fuel pump out yet it's right there here's some of the wiring going to it i got it popped up and out of the way a little bit and it kind of wiggles around there. Okay, I got the wire off now. I'm not sure what this is yet. Let's see when I get it out here. Okay, I think the secret is you have to get these two tabs pushed in. And then lift the inner part up out. There we go. I think something's happening now. There we go. Got it. Hmm, not sure what all this stuff is. We got another sock inside here and a sock on the outside. Okay, got the inner sock off. There's a boot on the bottom of the fuel pump now that's not letting it slide out, out the top. I don't know how that comes off. Oh, it just slides out of that. go this is the guy right here well I got my install all together took it to the racetrack and it the car missed on me a couple times on my last pass I thought something was wrong with the tune didn't really know what was going on and took it for a drive when I got home and ran out of fuel at a quarter tank so the way this setup is it doesn't really work too well because the fuel pump is too high in here the stock one has some kind of a Venturi system, or I'm not even sure how it works, but it keeps fuel inside of here. It works for like slosh protection and stuff in the tank, but it doesn't really help me any with the new pump because if it runs out at a quarter tank, it's no good. So what I've done is I've cut the hole out here at the bottom um, where there was a little flapper where the fuel came in. I've got my new AEM pump so it'll fit down in there now and what we're going to do is put it down like that you can see whoops i can line it up so it'll come through so what we got to do 
is first thing I'm going to do is get a hose on here and clamp in. Then I can cut it. But the fuel pump's going to set all the way down in the bottom of here and it's going to stick through and my pickup will come off the bottom here. And then I trimmed this down right here too so it will fit and kind of hold it in place. And that's how we're going to do it because I don't have much time. I'll show you it once I get it back together. Okay, it's all back together. The pump is setting all the way down in the bottom here now. So hopefully it'll work. It's all wired up. Uh, new fuel hoses in here. I'm going to go ahead and throw it back in and we're going to try driving it and see how it does. I think this will be a lot better because we'll be picking up off the bottom of the tank instead of the at the quarter tank mark. So I'm just gonna drop this down in the tank. It's pretty dark in here. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get this sealed up, get the lines hooked back up, the um, connectors back on. It's pretty easy, you saw me take it back out. It's going back in the same way and we're gonna put the cover back on and we'll be good to go. I did finish the fuel pump installation up last night. Uh, it was getting really dark and my battery went dead on my GoPro. Uh, I did get it, it was really hard getting this top of the sending unit to seat down in there enough. I had to use a pry bar against the body and put some pressure on it to get it to get down far enough to get the snap ring to lock in. I got home from work tonight and sitting on my doorstep was a package from ZZP with my computer back so i mailed it out on a thursday and they received it on friday retuned it and mailed it to me monday and i got it back on tuesday which is today so i can't say enough about how good they are and how quick they are so i'm going to go ahead now and install this and we'll fire it up okay got the computer hooked up air filter is back in down there Hooked the battery back up and all I've done so far is just cycled the key a few times to get the fuel system primed. I'm going to go ahead and try to fire it up and see what happens. She's running a little rough but we'll see how she smooths out. Take her for a quick little drive. Yeah, I think it's already smoothed out quite a bit. Okay, we'll let it get up to temp. It doesn't seem to be running too bad. pretty good. 